this video I want to talk about dilution. In the last videos we saw how to calculate the concentration of solutions. We said the concentration it means the number of moles of solute which is dissolved in a solvent. So when we are talking about solution, we are talking about solute plus solution. So as we increase the solute, we're going to have more concentrated solution. And as we have less solute, it means that it is going to be, it is less concentrated or diluted. So dilution is about adding more solvent to the solution. So when we add the, when we increase dilution, when we do dilution, it means that we are increasing the volume of solution or the volume of solvent. So it means that the concentration is smaller, is lower amount for, we have the lower amount for concentration. So for example, if you assume the solvent is water, water is added to achieve a molarity desired for a particular solution. This process is called dilution. A typical dilution calculation involves determining how much water must be added to an amount of stock solution to achieve a solution of desired concentration. So, so as we do this dilution, it means that the number of moles of solute is not changing. The only thing that it, that it is changing is the volume of solvent or volume of solution. But the number of moles of solute stays constant. So the number of moles of solute after dilution is equal to the number of moles of solute before dilution. Let's have an example. Suppose we need to prepare 500 milliliter of one molar acetic acid from a 17.4 molar stock solution of acetic acid. What volume of this stock solution is required? So as you know here, with this volume, we have this concentration. We need to have the, we need to prepare the solution with this volume and this concentration. So based on that, we need to calculate the number of moles required here. So the first step to determine the number of moles of acetic acid in the final solution by multiplying the volume by the molarity. So as we said, the concentration is equal to number of moles of solute uh, divided by the volume of solvent or the volume of solution. So here we have the volume of solution, which is 500 milliliter. We need to convert it to liter, so divide it by 1,000. And we multiply it by the concentration of acetic acid, which is 1 mole per liter, as we have it here, 1 molar. So 1 mole per 1 liter. So if we do that, we're going to get these two cancel each other, and these two cancel each other. So what remains here is mole of acetic acid. And when we do calculation, we get 0.5 mole acetic acid. So we require this number of moles of acetic acid. And since the moles of solute after dilution is equal to moles of solute before dilution, we need to see in what volume of a solution having this concentration, we can have this number of moles. <coughs> so we need to use a volume of 17.4 molar acetic acid that contains 0.5 moles of acetic acid as we calculated here. So this is the consideration. We have the number of moles so we can find the volume. So volume times concentration is going to give us number of moles. So concentration is given, which is here, and uh, the number of moles is given. We can find the volume. So this divided by this part. These two cancel each other and it goes down top. So 0.5 divided by 17.4 is going to be 0.0287 liter or 28.7 milliliter. So it means that this solution with this volume is going to contain, with this concentration, is going to contain the same amount of moles of acetic acid as we have here. Let's have another example. What volume of 16 molar sulfuric acid must be used to prepare 1.5 liter of a 0.1 molar sulfuric acid? So we need to prepare 1.5 
liter of 0.1 molar acetic acid so first of all we need to calculate how much mo how many moles of sulfuric acid we we're gonna have so 1.5 volume times concentration is gonna give us the number of moles so 1.5 liter solution times 0.1 mole acetic acid divided by liter of solution these two cancel each other and we're gonna have 0.15 moles acetic acid so we keep this number and we see here we have the concentration and then we need to find volume volume of 16 molar sulfur acid so v times concentration is going to give us the number of moles so 0.15 moles of acetic acid divided by 16 molar 16 mole h2so4 per one liter of solution these two cancel each other so you're gonna get 9.4 times 10 power minus 3 liter or 9.4 milliliter solution so the central idea in performing the calculation associated with solution is to recognize that the number of moles of solute is not changing are not changed by dilution so we can have two cases the initial or two condition the initial condition and the final condition so as we said the number of moles is not changing before cal before dilution and after dilution so we can say that's the initial condition and final condition so number of moles as we said the volume of solvents times concentration of solution is going to give us number of moles so m times v is going to give us number of moles concentration times volume of solution so m1 v1 which is the number of moles of solute in solution in one condition and on the other hand we have m2 dot v2 which is the number of moles of solution in a second or final condition so it must be equal number of moles is not changing by dilution <coughs> so m1 times v1 is number of moles of solute before dilution m2 times v2 is going to be mole solute after dilution so to what volume should you dilute 0.2 liter of a 15 molar sodium hydroxide solution to obtain a 3 molar sodium hydroxide so as we see here we have the before dilution we have this volume which is 0.2 liter and we have a concentration so we're gonna say v1 is 0.2 liter m1 is 15 molar and that's the final condition which is the concentration is 3 molar so m2 is 3 molar so m1 times v1 is gonna be equal to m2 v2 so here everything is given except v2 so we write it down and we put these numbers this cancel each other so it's gonna be one liter so we can say 0.2 liter of 15 molar sodium hydroxide has the same number of moles of sodium hydroxide as one liter of three molar sodium hydroxide